Hello students of grade 12. Today we are going to discuss the chapter 12, a new topic called pest resistant plant. Now, biotechnology or genetic engineering plays a very important role. Okay? In India, there was a time that the, the root of the tobacco plant, okay, the root of the tobacco plant was infected by a nematode parasite. This is a nematode parasite called Melodogni incognitia. Okay, incognitia. Okay, Melodogni incognitia, and this infect the roots of tobacco plant. It's not a leaf or stem, but it's a root of the tobacco plant. So once they infect the tobacco, the roots of the tobacco plant, it was found that the yield, okay, the product, the quality, okay, the yield, the quantity of the tobacco started decreasing, okay. So uh, biotechnology come up with the idea, okay, to help, okay, a novel strategy. It's called a novel strategy. which we call RNA interference, RNA interference, okay? Now this is a strategy observed in all the eukaryotic cells, in all the eukaryotic cells. So this defense mechanism, as a defense mechanism in all the eukaryotic cells, as a defense mechanism. So here in RNA interference, we are using the uh, the RNA interference. We are using a method, a strategy. Okay, that is silencing of silencing of specific mRNA. Now, if we silence, if we don't allow the mRNA to produce protein, then what happened? Even though if melodogny ignosia infect the tobacco plant, they have to go undergo replication, then transcription, then they have to produce protein, right? So if we don't allow the protein to be formed, then then we call this as RNA interference. We are interfering the process of transcription. Okay? We will not allow the mRNA to produce protein. Let's discuss. Now, in a short, we can tell that RNA interference is nothing but silencing of your specific mRNA. For example, this is nematode, nematode, okay, in fact the tobacco plant, tobacco plant, okay, tobacco plant. Now, if we introduced, just say that, we introduced the double stranded RNA we introduce the double stranded RNA it means that nematode will produce DNA to RNA right DNA to DNA normal process will take place DNA to DNA then DNA will form mRNA right so this mRNA just say that 5 prime to 3 prime now with the help of with the help of agrobacterium to be efficient Agrobacterium. I already told that it is one of the plant genetic engineer and we can use as a cloning vector. So agrobacterium to be patient. And we are introducing double stranded RNA. So this double stranded RNA will go and bind to this process during the process of DNA to RNA, then this RNA will form protein, right? So we will not allow the protein to be formed, okay? Nematode, this nematode, it's a parasite that infect the plant. Example, typical plant. So, with the help of RNA interference technology, 
the idea of RNA interference is to silence the mRNA. Silencing the mRNA means not allowing them to produce protein. So how to do how to do that? We have to take a cloning factor called Acrobacterium tubifacient, and we will allow the plant to be infected with it. You know that this Acrobacterium tubifacient they infect the plants, right? And they produce tumors in plants. So we introduce our gene of interest. So this double stranded was introduced in this tobacco plant, and then when they undergo the natural process that is replication to transcription then transcription to protein so when they undergo this mrna so we introduce this double strand rna so they will go and bind with this always remember that it will be a complementary strand okay so and that can be done with the help of agrobacterium tubifacient so this was introduced in a tobacco plant okay so this is the method of mrna silencing now, we are going to discuss another topic called as genetically engineered human insulin. Genetically engineered human insulin. I hope you know what is insulin, right? So insulin is a hormone synthesized by the pancreas gland, right? pancreas produced insulin and this insulin is is a hormone that that is essential for the for the diabetics patient if enough hum, insulin is not produced in our human body we get disease called as diabetics so it means that this insulin is produced even by the other animals but why we cannot take insulin, why human body cannot take insulin that are produced by the other animals, like cows and buffaloes. So previously we take slaughtered cows, okay? Insulin were injected in human being from the slaughtered cows. So they found that the patient give rise to allergy and certain uh, production of some antibodies okay proteins okay as a form of allergy allergy have been observed in the case of you know what is allergy right when i say allergy allergy is nothing but antigen antibody interaction something that is coming from outside foreign right our body has the ability to recognize this one is foreign and this one is self cells right so there is a cause of allergy in a patient. So that cause problem, right? So do we think that can we take insulin orally? Can we in can the diabetics patient provide that insulin orally? So the plant uh, the genetic engineering or the biotechnology provides this platform, okay, where we can where we can produce insulin artificially in the lab okay so uh, first of all let's see what is insulin okay so this is our structure of insulin so there are normally three chains okay we have c chain or we call c peptide okay so this area is called your a chain or we call A peptide or B chain or we call B peptide okay so in all the mammals or human beings these are synthesized as the pro hormone pro hormone or we call pro insulin pro insulin means it is not yet matured it is not yet functional okay so it is non functional or it is not yet matured. So they have to undergo maturation process and then, then only they will convert to insulin. And how it happened? So between the A chain and B chain, there is a disulfide bridges. This question was also asked in your AIMS examination and even in your NEET examinations. So this, this 
B chain and A chain. Okay, the B chain and the A chain they have a disulfide bridges. Disulfide bridges. So if we eliminate this C chain, okay, and if there is only A chain and B chain, we consider as insulin. So plus free C peptide. So if you just release the C peptide chain, we call insulin, fully matured insulin that is required for the diabetics patient. So let's give uh, the biotechnology or the RDNA technology, okay, in 1983, in 1983, we call Ili Lili, Ili Lili, okay, Ili Lili, Ili, Ili Lili, okay, it's an American name, an American scientist, an American company, okay, they, they, they genetically engineered human insulin, okay, 18, 1983. Genetically engineered human insulin. How they have done was that there was a problem that to synthesize only the mature insulin, okay, because uh, both A, B, and C. They, they get they get to produce but we need only insulin not the pro insulin so they took e plasmid as a vector just said that this is a plasmid of e coli this is a plasmid okay same thing and they put here you know that this gene this target dna or just say this target dna but this target dna will produce A chain and this target DNA or your foreign DNA will produce B chain so once we get A chain and B chain okay separately they synthesize A chain and B chain separately and then they join these two by by inserting disulfide bridges and in that way, a genetically engineered human insulin was developed. Okay. In the next class, we will discuss about gene therapy and some of the molecular diagnosis tools. Thank you.